Come on in, everyone. Come on in because we are back for Love is Blind, episode 12. I know I'm a few days late, but hopefully all of you have already watched it or are watching it now. And so there won't be no spoilers because um, I'm probably late to the party. I'm on CP time to the party. But I'm here. I am here. Still let me into the party. I hope y'all got some food left and some good drinks left. The good alcohol. I hope y'all ain't still just got the cheap alcohol left. I still want top shelf, even though I'm on CP time. I hope the food is good. <laughs> but we got to talk about this ep episode 12. Were there any surprises? You know, if y'all been watching my videos, I was not surprised. I was not surprised that Ashley said yes to Tyler. I was not surprised that that at, uh, Ramsey and... Uh, Maritza didn't make it to the altar. I was not even surprised that Ramsey was the one that broke up with her because I saw that coming. Already knew. I already knew they weren't a good match. And based on the way that she was acting, I pretty much sure it was going to be Ramsey's who was going to say no. Who was going to say no. Um, I know it was heart-wrenching to watch Maritza cry like that. She was wailing like a baby. She was wailing, y'all. It was hard to watch. It was really hard to watch. I really did just want to hug her. Um, you just kind of want to put your arms around her and say, girl, it's going to be okay. Wipe your tears away. And after she stops wailing and heaving and crying, then you want to have a serious conversation with her. That's what I would do. Marissa's my daughter. I'm going to comfort her in that moment. I'm going to listen to her. I'm going to hug on her. I'm going to wrap my arms around her. I'm going to tell her that I love her. I'm going to give her kisses. Then what I'm going to do, after she calms down, I don't know, maybe it's not that same day. Maybe it's the next day. I don't know. Once she gets all, get rid of all the emotions so we can have a really good conversation, I'm going to have a good conversation with her. And the conversation that I'm going to have with Maritza is going to be about, he was never the guy for you anyway. He was never the guy. And I'm going to tell you why he was never the guy. And you were never the girl for him. He wasn't the guy for you, and you weren't the girl from him. So if I just start off talking about he wasn't the guy for her, I'm going to say you really should have found out more about that ex-wife, how that marriage ended. Because the story that he told was that his wife got too into the church, into God, and it wasn't what he wanted to do. But yet he used to be in the church. He was in the ministry. So it wasn't as if he was dating this woman and she got into the church and he never wanted to be in it. No, he started in the church. That's where that woman met him. And it looks like that even though they broke up, the family still loves and adores the ex-wife. So much so that when he called to tell the family about him getting married again, they told him, not again. Are you going to do this woman what you did to the woman, the other woman, the ex-wife, the one we all still like, the one we still see at church? the one we still follow on Instagram, because you broke her heart. She's still broken over that marriage, the fact that you did her the way you did. Are you going to do this to another woman? So they put a guilt trip on him, but rightfully so, because what Ramsey tells us is he doesn't think. He leads with his emotions. He makes emotional decisions. I said it from the beginning that this relationship was shaping up to be almost like a Ramsey had the female emotions and, um, Marissa had more of the male emotions. You see, this was the dynamic they were setting up from the beginning when I was telling you that Marissa really is very bossy. She doesn't come off like that. We're going to get to what's, I'm still, I'm still going to get to that part of what my conversation will be with her. But first I want to let her know, girl, you didn't lose nothing. You didn't lose nothing. I know your heart is broken. I know you're over here wailing inside, but you didn't lose nothing because he was never for you. Okay, and I'm not for sure who he's for. You see what I'm saying? Um, never trust a man who don't have no good reason for divorce. Um, I know everybody likes to come up with flimsy reasons and they say that's okay. What's wrong with people just wanting to leave, leave relationships because uh, they're not happy? I'm not saying that you can't leave. You could do whatever you want to do. But they're going to become unhappy periods in every marriage. So if you haven't developed any skills to work through your unhappy period so you can get back to happiness... I don't know what to tell you. It's a greater risk. It's a greater risk. So I didn't really like Ramsey's excuse for ending his divorce. It was a red flag to me that the family chose that woman over him. It was a red flag to me that those 
family probably told Ramses, if you get married, that's fine. We're not coming. We're not coming because we're still with your ex-wife. We're still on her side, so we won't be coming. So what Ramsey realized was, dang, I'm about to go out on a limb, marry a woman that I'm not quite sure about. My family doesn't support it. And if this one fails, guess what? I'm going to have egg all over my face again, again. Ramsey really wanted to be almost like a stay-at-home mom, dad. That's what he wanted to be. That was what they were setting up. They were setting up that Marissa would make all the money. He'd be able to stay at home. He'd do all the cooking, the cleaning, the rearing of the children. He could be real emotional, right? But all he asked in return from Maritza is that she treat him nice. That's what he wanted. He wanted to be a stay-at-home dad, do all the domesticated duties, cook, clean, all these other kind of things. And probably the reason why that didn't line up with the woman from the church is because the woman from the church wanted to be those things. The woman from the church wanted a more traditional marriage where she might have been the one staying at home with the kids, maybe doing more of the domestic duties, playing the more feminine role in the relationship. But, but you know, she had to fight with Ramses, Ramses with a roach clip. I know y'all want to call it some, a braid. It's not a braid. It's a roach clip. Look it up. It's from the 80s. He wanted to play that role. So see, he and his ex-wife, they didn't get along. Because what the, what the ex-wife wanted, the role she wanted, she wanted the protector, the provider. She wanted the more of the traditional role that she, she's read about in the Bible. But Ramsey was like, no, I want that position. I don't want to have to go out and make all this money all the time and, and provide for you and fix things around the house. I don't want that. So when he met Marissa in the pods, Marissa, that's what she, that's what she touted herself as. She's this strong woman, right? She said um, she doesn't want to really be a stay-at-home mom. She asked him, can you do all the cooking? Because I can't cook or I don't want to cook. Can you do all the cleaning? Can you do, raise all the children? And then what I would do is I'll go out and make all the money. That's what they set up. But the problem that Marissa didn't get was Marissa's not nice. I know no one wants to hear it, but her mama said it about her. Her mama said it about her when she said, when they had that little exchange, as much as we don't like the mama, sometimes truth comes out of people's mouth. Marissa says, my mother thinks I'm evil. That was one thing. And the mother said, yep, she can be a bitch. And what Ramses was talking about was Marissa's bitchy moments in the house. That she comes home from work and she's bitchy. The first time she blamed it on PMS. I got PMS. That's why I'm bitchy. <laughs> Women, we could relate. We know we, well, I ain't got a period no more. I done gone through the change. But, you know, people say, hey, I get bitchy doing PMS. We understood it. But what Ramses was talking about was you're in a bad mood a lot of the times. He said, I liked your energy when we were in the pods because it, all, it was all fun, exciting, and bubbly. Remember that? But then when we hear in the real world and you have the real world on your shoulders, working, going to law school, commuting two hours, you come home and you're kind of bitchy to me. And like I said, if Ramses wants to be the wife, it's almost like a man coming home from work, bitching at the wife, talking about what you, what you do all day. You ain't done nothing around here and you don't feel appreciated. That's what Ramses was talking about. He said, when we were in the pods, we had an agreement. I would be the stay at home dad. You would be the man, like the, the, the breadwinner going out. But when you come home, just like a wife has a breadwinner husband, I want you to come home and treat me well. And you didn't come home and treat me well. You came home irritable with a bad attitude, with PMS and everything else. And Marissa's like, well, I don't understand why you can't put up with me just because I'm on my period. It wasn't just on her period because I saw it weeks ago. I told you that Marissa was a bad husband. I told you she was going to be a bad husband because she was bossy and she was mean. And what she wanted to set up in this marriage was a dynamic where she could be the female when she wanted to be the female, but then be the male when she wanted to be the male. I said before that Maritza is a chameleon. She doesn't know who she is. And this is why, now I've already transitioned to my conversation about Marissa. I wouldn't tell her this way because this is kind of maybe a little bit too harsh. I'm just talking to y'all right now. But what Marissa needs to concentrate on when she's wailing over here and she's talking about how no one likes her after three months because after three months, the real Marissa comes out. She can't keep up this bubbly, nice, sweet woman all the time that she was doing in the pods. 
I told you the first time I saw the chameleon in her when she was talking to Bolden with one voice. And then when she talked to Ramsey, she talked to him in a whole different dialect, a whole different tone. I know we code switch as black women. I know. But I said that's another sign of how Marissa changes who she is. You see, I believe that Marissa had the conversations in the pod with Ramsey's about him not really being for the military. Because when Ramsey came out of those pods and started saying all that stuff about people in the military, basically his disdain for them, I was like appalled by it. Appalled by his, some of his views. A lot of his views I'm very appalled by. But what I believe is that Ramsey shared these views with her in the pods. And what Marissa did was she said she just pretended like they weren't that important to her. She pretended she was someone else. She pretended she was the military person who really didn't like the military. So Rams is like, okay, I can be with you because now you're a person who, yeah, you were in the military, but now you're willing to denounce the military. Okay, I'm with you. But when she came out of the pods and she started getting around her military friends, once again, she started saying, no, I'm very proud of the military. And Rams is like, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute, girlfriend. This is not what we talked about in the pods. You were one person in the pods and now you're another person. Who are you? Ramsey says, I don't want nobody in the military. Now, if you would have told me you was in the military, I would have told you in the pods you weren't for me. I don't believe that Ramsey lied to Maritza. I don't. I believe Maritza lied about who she is to Ramsey's. And she doesn't probably know she's lying because I think she's been doing this all her life. Because the fact that she tells me she has a history of men being with her and then leaving her tells me she's not presenting her real self. She's presenting a person who she thinks those men want. Just like she marries all these military men. She gets with them. That's who she dated. Those men do not want the strong women, boss chick women. They didn't want them. They wanted women who were going to stay at home, raise the family while they went off to war, and fought the war, and they were the hero. That's what they wanted. That's not Maritza. So Marissa would pretend to be that woman with these military men. But as time went by, she probably started becoming more bitchy and argumentative. And they were like, I don't want this type of person. Boom. You good for the bedroom? Because that's one thing we know Marissa's good at, the bedroom. She done, she done developed a few skills when she's in the mood. And after that, the men are gone. They're all gone. She's telling the same old story. But what she keeps thinking is, oh, it's the men I'm choosing. Well, it's also who you are and the men who choose you. One thing, the reason why she cried so much with Ramses is because she said he was the first person she could be herself with. And what she's saying is, he's the first person I could take on more of this dominant role. He was okay with me being the breadwinner. He was okay with me not raising the children. He was okay with me being more of a shot caller or whatever. And so she felt I could be more of myself around him. And she was so happy about that. But the part that where you weren't yourself was the bitchy part. You a mean husband, um, Maritza. I hate to tell you. Your mama even said it. And Ramsey is saying it. Both people are saying the same thing. Ramsey is saying that your energy, our energy doesn't match well in the house. Your energy was great in the pods when you were bubbly and you were nice. But now that we're living together, you're kind of bitchy. You're kind of mean. And that's what the mama said too, that she's evil and she's bitchy. And then when she tells us she used to date men and they love her in the first, they love her personality and her energy in the first three months. But after that, they don't want her. Everyone is saying the same thing. Everyone. I know Marissa's crying and wailing, but she ought to be glad that Ramsey stepped up and actually didn't do the wedding. What does she want him to do? Say no to her at the altar? What, get married and then divorce her one month later? The pain was going to be inevitable, Marissa. The pain was going to come. It was either going to come in this moment, it was going to come at the altar, or it was going to come right after you got married. The pain was going to come. The pain was going to come. So in this respect, you know what? There was no getting around the pain that Marissa was going to feel. Um, and I actually thank Ramses for doing it when he did it. Because I, of all the three choices, now at the altar or afterwards, I think that now was the best thing to do. Um, and he did it after he saw the real Marissa. Some people would say, well, why didn't he do it sooner? Because it takes a minute to see who the real Marissa is. Because Marissa is good at being a chameleon. She's good at putting on a facade and act. That's what she's good at. So my advice to Marissa is, um, first of all, you got to 
do what you did with Ramses. That is, come out authentically as yourself, a girl who doesn't really want to raise children uh, by, you know, by herself or be the primary caregiver, the girl who wants to work all the time. Do all that, Marissa. That part you changed correctly. But the other part that you need to still work on is probably your attitude. Is probably your attitude. Um, I don't know what puts you in a bad mood. Is it a bad day? Is it a driver who cuts you off? Is it just PMS in your period? But too many people are talking about it. Too many people. I didn't see all the footage, but Ramsey's talked about it. Your mama talked about it. And from what you tell us, all your exes talk about it. So it's there. Let's stop denying that it's there, Maritza, and let's start addressing it. Let's figure out what it is. Is it something that is going on psychologically with you? Do you need therapy to get to what the root of the problem is? I saw it in Maritza. I told you back then, I said, she's going to be a mean husband. She makes a bad husband. That's what I said before. And I even think she makes one that would cheat on her husband. Because all that, that extra sexual... Um, flavor that she was bringing to the marriage and you know i think eventually she saw she didn't want to be with bolden but she made me nervous she made me nervous she made me start to think about those bad husbands that make all the money and still cheat on their wives even though they wives are at home taking care of the family feeding the kids cleaning the house she needs some she needs some attitude adjustments some personality adjustments and she's got to figure out where it comes from maybe she needs some techniques to calm herself down to control her uh, highs and lows and her personality. I don't know. I really don't know. Nowadays, people need to go to therapists, not only therapists, but sometimes psychiatrists. Sometimes there are neurons, disconnections in your head that makes you not be able to concentrate. ADHD, all these types of things people are learning, they contribute to our mood disorders. Marissa has a mood disorder. She needs to go figure out what it is. And it's not the man. So before Marissa pairs up with another man, she needs to figure out her own mood disorders. That's what she needs to figure out. So that's what I would have ended with, Marissa. I would have ended with, after she calmed down, I would have ended with, he wasn't the right person for you, but let's see what we could come up with so that maybe this is the last time you have to go through this pain, Marissa. Let's really look at what's going on with you before we just give all our attention to how bad the man is. Because you're the common denominator. And so I think if we do some work with you, Marissa, Maybe we can make you a better person so that you pair better with another person. But we got to know, get to know who you are, what you want, and you have the confidence to show that person authentically and also be able to have some more control over your emotions. You know, um, that's what I would be. That's what my advice would be to Maritza. And then if I move on to my next niece or my next daughter, with, which would be Ashley, y'all going to be mad at this too, but um, I'm at the wedding. If Ashley's my daughter or my niece, regardless of how the way I feel about Tyler, I'm at Ashley's wedding. I'm hugging her. I'm kissing her. I'm wishing her well. I'm praying for her. Okay. I'm just that type of person, y'all. I might give you advice, hard truth. Um, but in the end, when you say to me, I understand what you're saying and I hear you, but it's still what I want for my life. And I'm just so very happy. I'm going to get on your happy train. I'm not going to be the person on the sideline saying, because I don't agree with you, Mary Tyler, I'm not coming to your wedding. I'm not supporting you. I'm just not that girl. I'm just not that girl. I'm going to be at your wedding. I'm going to love on you. I'm going to be there as an extra shield of protection for you. I'm going to tell Tyler, I got my eyes on you. The minute you step out of the line, the minute you do any of that dirty work that was done before, my foot's going to be 10 feet up your ass. I'm going to be on you. I'm going to be on you. And you and Ashley may love you now, but you still got some proving to do to me. That's fine that she loves you. I'm good with that. I'm going to support her. But you still got some proving to me to do. And you know what? I'm all for second chances. You know, I'm watching this show over here, Love at the Lockup. Women are over here loving on men that have done 
uh, jail time for 18 years, prison time. They've lied to a lot of people. They've lied. I know we're talking about Tyler's lie to Ashley about he didn't have any kids. I know we're talking about Tyler's denying his children. I know these all egregious lies and acts, but people forgive other people of egregious lies and acts all the time. All the time. There are people out here who have stolen. They're thieves. They're liars. They're criminals. All this. And all these people have been able to go on and find someone to love them. So is Tyler a, a habitual liar? Yeah, he is. Has he, has he done some egregious thing? Yeah, he is. But he has found someone to love him. And that someone to love him is, is uh, Ashley. And Ashley feels loved by them. And they look happy. No matter what anyone says, those two look happy. At that altar, they looked happy. At that wedding, they looked happy. They look like they're in love. I don't feel like Tyler is pretending he's in love with Ashley. Nope, I think he's really, really in love with them. And I think that further is why that ex, ex the baby mama, Bri, and everyone so upset is because what those friends said. Tyler was the guy that was never going to get married. He was the one that walked around talking about F, F these bitches, I'm never getting married. He was the one out here running the streets doing all this dirty work. Everyone knew who Tyler was. That's why Tyler told us from the beginning, there are a lot of people who don't think I'm a good guy. You think I'm a good guy, Ashley, but I'm only good for you because there's a lot of people out here who don't think I'm a good guy. And those friends said it. Those friends said, who is this Tyler that's all mushy and crying and the F boy? One thing that's going to have to happen is Tyler's going to have to stop hanging around them, the party crew, the ones that was doing the baby oil orgies, because they're a bad influence on Tyler. If Tyler, Tyler really wants to turn a new leaf and he wants to be a new man, if he really wants to become the man he's telling Ashley he wants to be and he is, even though we don't think he is, he's going to have to stop hanging around them friends because none of those friends are a good influence. I could tell you that right now because on the wedding day, they were just talking about we want the old Tyler back. We want the gangster Tyler back. They're not a good influence. So what I would say is you need to cut them loose, Tyler. If you were willing to cut loose your own kids, you're going to need to cut loose those friends. Those friends are who you need to cut loose. They're not good for you. They want to have orgy parties with baby oil, and you don't need that. If you really want a new life, Tyler, you're going to have to cut them loose. Then I would tell Tyler and Ashley... That's fine. You want to cut loose, cut loose these kids in, in the immediate for this year or whatever because you really need to work on your own relationship. And right now it's too heavy for all of you to take all of the one. That's fine. But you're going to have to make that right. You're going to have to make that right. If Tyler's my son-in-law, Ashley's my daughter, you're going to have to make that right. You're going to have to get back into those children's lives. Ashley, you're going to have to accept those children as your bonus children, stepchildren, whatever you want to call them. You guys are going to have to make that right. Because I'm not going to be able to look at you, Tyler, knowing you got three kids you abandoned. You can't come to Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, and sit up at my table knowing you've left behind three kids. You're going to have to make that right. Okay? And Ashley, you married them. You're going to have to accept it. You're going to have to accept your new role. All this comes with Ashley. That's what's going to have to happen. You can't pick and choose. You can't pick and choose which parts of Tyler's life you want and leave the rest behind. You can't leave complete people behind. Now, do you have to have a complete, you know, relationship with that woman bride? No, you don't have to. But there needs to be a relationship with those children. Absolutely. I know everybody's running around talking about, you know, out here in the YouTube world about, oh, what about the back child support Tyler owes? He owes $30,000. A $30,000, that's not even a... a a, a Honda, the price of a Honda. He can pay back $30,000. Absolutely, he can pay back $30,000. People owe hundreds of thousands of dollars on their student loans. Uh, $30,000 in debt for child support, he can make it up, pay it off. The, it's not like they can't recover from this. People can recover from $30,000 worth of debt. Credit can recover. All these things can be recovered. It's not the end of the world. Tyler has missed out on a year with those children. 
that's fine. It's a year he'll never get back, but he can repair the relationship. He can get back in the lives of the children. He can catch up on his child support, start paying child support. Those kids aren't so old to the point where now they're so angry with their father. No, they're still in the stage where it doesn't matter what the mom or daddy does. They still love them. It's not going to be till they start getting older and they start saying, wow, why isn't my daddy around? But he can recover from this. He absolutely can. That's what he's going to need to do. He's going to need to turn this ship around. And this idea that he can't pay off $30,000 worth of child support or he can't pay off, you know, a judgment he has against him for $8,000, that's nothing. Maybe a lot of you aren't used to running credit reports. I'm a landlord. I've run a lot of credit reports on people in the landlord business. And let me tell you, lots of people have a lot of debt. A lot of people have a lot of debt. You actually, when you're looking at people's credit and debt, you got to really put it in perspective. I mean, I mean, I would run credit for people who are, make tons of money, six figures, $200,000, $150,000, and they got student loan debt. They're paying $600 a month of student loan debt, or they got a car note, or yeah, they're, they got child support that they owe. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. They can't turn their lives around. If, if, if landlords rejected every person out there who owed some child support or who owed, who had a judgment against them for $8,000, a lot of people wouldn't even be in no apartments, okay? And this idea that just because you marry someone, you take on all their past debts is not true. People really need to educate themselves on laws that protect you even when you're going in marriage. There's so many things to protect people when they marry another person. And this idea that because Ashley and Tyler are together, when child support is set for those other three children, it will be set using Ashley's income. That's not always true either. You need to look up the, the laws in your state. That's not true. Some states do that, but a lot of states don't. A lot of states only look at his income. Educate yourself. I don't have all the answers for you, but don't just believe what people out here are saying that because you marry a person that has debt, now you're responsible for all their debt. That's not true. It's just not true. Even if someone owed back taxes and you married them, and let's say you filed taxes together, um, then they say, oh, what well, they could take your, your tax return to cover their debt. That's not true. All you have to do is file a form and you get all your tax money back. You know, th that's what I'm saying. There are things in the law that protect people against things of people did before you. That's like saying, oh, because you're a felon, now I'm a felon. No, you're not. No, you're not. And put some safeguards around yourself. You don't have to have joint accounts in the beginning. When Tyler's proven himself, you don't need joint bank accounts. Have separate bank accounts until he proves himself worthy of being, a, being able to be a financial leader. But this idea that people can't get second chances, I, I disagree with that. People can get second chances all the time. I give people in the landlord business, landlords are giving people second chances all the time. People get evicted from apartments. People run into financial problems. Somebody's got to give them a second chance. Prisoners come out of prison. Somebody's got to give them a second chance. And I'm not saying everybody has to. You don't have to be the person that gives people second chances. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with people who don't want to take certain risks. There's nothing wrong with people who say, you know what? I would never invite a homeless person to my life. They might. I don't know. There's other people who say, no, I want to give a homeless person a second chance. There's some people who would never invite wayward children in the house. Another person said, I'm going to do it. Ashley seems to be the person who says, you know what? I, I know what Tyler's done. I know what he's done. And all of you sitting out there thinking that Tyler has not told Ashley everything, I don't agree. I think he's told her everything. He may not have said it on camera. I think she knows. And the reason why I think she knows is if you go back to when he first, we saw the scene of when he was breaking the news to her, they even revealed that he had already told her off camera but she wanted to do it on camera. And that means the on camera scene was staged. We only saw part of the conversation, the part she wanted on camera. She probably didn't want everything else on camera. I believe that he actually told her when they were in Mexico, because that's when he was telling her, I don't care what my mama says about you. I'm going to stick with you. I believe he had told her then, on Mexico. 
So he lied when he proposed. He lied to the producers. He lied to the show on the application. But what he knew was when we enter this real world and we get our phone back, Ashley's going to know the truth. So therefore, I'm going to tell her in Mexico. And that's when I think he told her early in Mexico. And she reconciled it back then. So everybody thinking he's still lying to her. And here we are day. Wait till she finds out the truth. She's going to leave him. I don't think so. I think he told her the truth back then. I think, I think they, they lied to us on camera and didn't tell us what their real conversations were. But I think they told her. And I think she decided, I'm in love with this man. I understand what happened in the past. I understand the lies he told. But I'm going to forgive him because I'm in love with him. Is it a risk? It's absolutely a risk. It's absolutely a risk. But it's a risk she's willing to take. She's in love with him. And like I said, if she's my niece or she's my daughter... I'm going to hug on her. I'm going to love her. I'm going to wish her well. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to look Tyler in the eye and I'm going to say, I got my eye on you and you better become the man you want to be. And if he doesn't ever become that man and he falls short, I will be there to hug on my daughter, love on my daughter, love on my niece, whatever. That's what I'll do. Tyler's made some bad decisions. He's told a lot of lies. Okay. And that does point to a morality issue. It points to a morality issue. And, and um, is that always something you can get rid of? No, it's not always something you can get rid of. He may just be a liar in the relationship. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to encounter. I really don't know. But is he going to be able to change enough? Can he change everything about himself? Probably not. But can he change enough about himself that they can have a happy marriage? That's what I'm going to root for. That they can change enough. And let's not act as if Tyler not going to have some stuff he's got to put up with Ashley. Ashley's no saint, okay? Ashley's no saint. Um, I believe Ashley can be probably a, a bit of a hard nose. I really do believe she can. And it pales in comparison to what we're doing with Tyler, but he's going to have some things too that he's going to have to forgive, forget, and look over with Ashley. Ashley's so happy that she's here. She says she really wants to be a wife. She really wants to be a mother. They're going to start having kids right away. I see it already. They even talked about it on the wedding day again. Within a year. Within a year. Ashley said, let's get this thing going. And we already know that Tyler is not that real protective over his sperm. So he's going to do it. And what's he going to do? Have three children over here he lied about and then tell Ashley no? Absolutely not. They weren't even using protection in the honeymoon. They said it. They said, we're not even using protection in the honeymoon. And Ashley said, I just don't want to get pregnant before my wedding day. But she don't mind getting pregnant thereafter. She doesn't mind it. And neither did Tyler. He wasn't willing to put it on no condom. He said, shoot, I gave, I gave a whole lesbian bisexual some babies. So why can't I give this woman I love some babies? They're absolutely going to have babies and they're going to move on. So I'm happy for them. I'm happy that they love each other. I'm happy they found love for, for however long it lasts. Even if the love or the happiness lasts one year only, then be grateful for one year of happiness. <laughs> be grateful. For one, and however many years they have, be grateful for it. That's what I say. And of course, I was happy about Taylor and Garrett. I hope they also have a long, happy marriage. I was, I was for this couple from the very beginning, rooting for them. So it was good to see them getting married going forward. Um, they're both so happy. They look like they have a solid communication relationship. Um, I just expect them to be together. It looks like their family came together. His mom eventually showed up. Her mom and dad showed up. Love them. Love them a lot. I love the fact that the mom held on to that bonnet from when she was a baby and presented her with something old for the wedding. I loved everything about this couple. I loved it from the very beginning. Like any couple, they're going to have their challenges, of course. And um, as I said with Taylor, she's going to have to learn to give a little bit more. She's still running around talking about how she loves that she can just continue to do everything she wanted in life, but also have a husband. So she's going to have a few awakenings because I think Taylor looks at things as I can keep doing whatever I wanted to do when I was single, but now I got a husband. But she doesn't understand that once those babies start coming, she's not going to be able just to live for herself. Taylor is used to living for herself, and she's happy that now she got a husband to live with her for herself. Um, just like moving to San Diego. That was her dream to move back to San Diego, and she found Garrett who was willing to do that. But once she starts getting into marriage, she's going to realize that all her decisions can't be made based on what she wants, and then everyone goes along with it. 
especially when those kids come. Especially when those kids come. Those kids are going to com probably conflict with some of her other goals in life. And she's not going to be able just to do what she wants to do. She's going to have to balance her marriage, her, her children, and her career life. And right now, I don't think Taylor quite sees it. But it's going to come upon her. It's going to come upon her. But we'll see. Everybody got married on the 13th. Her parents got married on the 13th. His parents got married on the 13th. And now they're getting married on the 13th. Wow. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? But I'm happy, y'all. We got two marriages out of this season. And so it's a winner. I always say that if I could watch any of these reality shows about dating, marriage, and we get one couple, I'm happy. I don't need everybody to make it. I can be happy. So we got one and a half. We got one good one, Taylor and Garrett, and we got half of one with Tyler and Ashley. But I'm happy for Tyler and Ashley because they look happy. They look happy. And so therefore, I'm going to root for them. I'm going to pray for them. And um, I wish them well. I hope at the reunion, time comes. I hope they're still together. I hope things are going well for both of these couples. But that's it, y'all. I will talk to you later. Bye.